Hey guys, how's it going? It's Douglas here at Drown Boy Productions, and today we're going to be taking a look at some Guar stuff. So we've taken a look at a few of these different items before because these items all belong to my friend Gavin Harden. He has an absolutely amazing Guar collection, just truly some awesome relics, some crazy artwork, uh, a lot of different merchandise pieces, some rarer stuff. So I'm going to let him present a majority of this, but yeah, we're just going to go ahead and take a look at all this stuff. So. In the frame. <laughs> all right, so what are we starting with? You um, said Skullhead? I said, no, let's go, um, yeah, let, let's start with Skullhead. That's the newest, coolest thing in here. Yeah, Skullhead's my favorite. Yeah, yeah. so I got this one from Nick, and um, I Nick think who? he got it, Nick Samino. If you know, you know. Yeah. yeah I, don't ha I shouldn't have to say. If you're a Guar collector. You know Nick. You know Nick. But, um, yeah, super cool. Been a collector for a long time. He's got a bunch of awesome stuff. I think he got this piece from Chris St. Martin, who got rid of a lot of his collection. Uh, and I was going to get it from him a while back, but I ended up not. And then uh, Nick and me ended up working out a deal, and I got it. Now, when I asked Nick about it, all he had to say was that uh, he thought it was used on the flesh column. Right, because and the size of it, right? Exactly. So I looked in the book, I started doing a bunch of research, and I could never find a good, clear image of a skull head on top of the flesh column. Yeah, you mind if I hold it and show it to the camera yeah, sure. while you talk about it? And um, so... I ended up getting it under the assumption that it was used on the flesh column. However, when I got it, I noticed how soft it was. And these tubes aren't what the band would normally run something like blood through. So uh, I was kind of like just wondering what it was. Because right. it's obviously like small scale. It's not the big mask or anything like that. It's It was made at the pit. But I didn't really have any information on who might have made it until I ended up uh, getting up with Don. And we got to do a uh, video call one night on Google Hangout. And uh, amongst many of the things that we talked about was this skull head. And he was super excited to see it because he was like, I, I don't know of any skull heads existing out there. Because, you know, obviously the the real one is yeah. long gone. And then there's another one at the pit that it's just has, rotting it's apart. been restored, but it's not in the greatest condition. And so to have one that actually still looks like Skullhead, yeah, it's still is mostly together. Cool. It's got a couple of little spots where it was already thin when they right, made it. Exactly. Now Don actually was able to shed some light on where it came from, though, because I asked him if he had sculpted it, but he said that he didn't. He said that they had an intern there around that time that was just super good at knocking out awesome sculptures. And uh, he gave them the big version and pretty much said, sculpt this downscaled. And what this, I don't know if this, I don't think this is the one that was used because Don said that he th remembers the one that they used being like rugged yeah. and destroyed and completely done for. But this was supposedly a prototype that was used for the scene where uh, Jello Biafra from uh, uh, the Dead Kennedys is the um glom boss and yeah. he does the transformation sequence yeah uh well he's ripping a bunch of like gel off and the head is expanding so these hoses back here would have been bladder were effects bladder effects exactly air pumping Very compressed cool. air in to blow this up which is why it's so soft and thin now it was also foam filled in the back here with a glove set into it so that was the first thing I noticed when I got it, is that it is actually a functional puppet. There is a perfect little slot in there for each finger, and you can see the wrinkles from where the glove were. So they sat their hand in there while the foam expanded, right. and uh, that's really cool, you know, so it could go when it was transforming. This thing is so awesome. It's so cool to finally learn some more about it, because I remember when you first got it, we saw these hoses... We yeah. thought possibly it was some kind of a spew effect. Right. And we thought maybe it was a spew effect on Yeah, the I was so column. confused because it doesn't go to the butthole. It doesn't right. go anywhere. The eyes aren't on here. Now, two of the finger holes go proper where the eyes are right. to puppeteer if there were eye caps there. But there aren't any surviving eye caps in the condition it's in. But one thing I really love about it is how they went with that OG skull head color scheme. They didn't do the blue green live version. So cool. They did Don's more like raw kind of corpsey version. I love that like purple kind of 
it's not very noticeable, but the veins are all in there and stuff too. Definitely. It's really, really yeah. cool. Yeah, it, like seeing it in person is so much cooler because you see all the little air bubbles and like when you when you lift him slash her, right. Doctor, Mister, Mrs. Professor, you can see like the actual sculpt details of where they put a clay snake so on sick. right there, and it ends and all the little details and everything. It's the perfect reference for anybody that wanted to uh, make one, make a skull head, definitely, because this was sculpted. By apparently somebody who Don couldn't even give me the name of. Couldn't remember. Couldn't remember, unfortunately. That's what Some poor unnamed member of Guar. Yes, exactly. But Don said that it was sculpted pretty much identical to his sculpture. It's really well done. Version it's it. awesome. This is probably one of the coolest things you own, in my opinion. It's my favorite. Like, Nick was also... We had a couple different things that we were offering, kind of. But uh, I ended up going with the skull head, ultimately, just because that's it's one of my head. favorite eras of the band. And, uh, like... There's not a lot of skull heads. Like there's only like one at the sh at the slave pit, and it's not really in the best condition. So as long as it looks like skull head, and it's from the pit from that era, it's skull head to me. Right. And let's talk about these. These are new as well, correct? Yeah. These are. Uh, I got these from Frank Corbett through Executioner Chuck Varga. Chuck Varga, Executioner has always been one of my favorite. Now, I'll take members the mask and hold it. We've already yeah, taken a look ahead, at the mask. Man. Yeah. Those are pretty common. I really want to get another one with the blood on it because I, I like the way that he's doing the blood because it's like it reminds me of like that 90s guar blood. It's like purple. Yeah. Those new ones are looking great. This one's also really cool. I really want to get one of the fleshy ones now too. I haven't gotten one of those just because he hasn't used them live. But the way that he's doing them now with the big like blue lip and the veins all over them, I almost like it's a cool have, art piece. I have to get yeah. one. Yeah, I, I want to get a pen and ink drawing from them first though. That's definitely way more important to me at the moment. But yeah, these here are um, these are Sexecutioner wrist gauntlets here, straight from the original. Uh, I believe the molds that he's been running from the '90s. They're traceable to one of those versions. He kind of switched around a little bit at the beginning, but these these molds have been ran for a long time. They've got real gnarly seams on them. This one's missing stuff. a spike and Yeah, exactly. But that's what makes it cool. Yeah. like that's how it was live. That's Guar style. Exactly. I love that. That's why I love getting Guar props because it's like when you get them and you see how they're made, it's just like so like you just want to go make something immediately after getting these because you're like, wow. Yeah. I was really hard on myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very cool stuff. And these then right these. here, these are so small, man. Chuck is just such a tiny guy. I know. Like his his masks are so small and all of his armor pieces are so small. These here go like this, I believe. They are the uh, calf and shin gauntlets. So these are both identical to yeah. each other. I got a matching set of the two. Uh, but yeah, there's like a spike that's like kind of falling off here that's been rubber cemented on. That's super cool though. I love that. Like there's like stray rubber cement on there. Those are the details. That's what's up. It's handmade. This is something that Chuck is really busting his ass for. And as somebody who knows what it's like to pull a cast of this thick out of a mold like that, yeah. he's busting his knuckles open and he is working hard. Like he's not trying to uh not trying to do anything for free. For and sure. I'm happy he's that members of Guar like him are still offering pieces like these two fans. Yeah, the shitty thing is is like a lot of the uh more humble Guar members are just not really active as much anymore like it, it seems like, I don't know, it, I like that kind of side of the band. Like, I don't know, I, I like, if you're the first person to make fun of yourself or something like that, it's just that kind of attitude always goes a lot further than being egotistical. And uh, Chuck's just one of those slaves. He's, he's, he's always been with the core message of what Guar has always been. Right. Which is just like rebellion, theater, against the system, you know, being different and pushing those boundaries and stuff. And, and then being humble about it and being a real person and not letting it kind of go to your head. Let's see, uh, what else we got here new? The sleazy bobblehead, isn't that yeah, a new this one? Is, this is brand new. This is from the new run that he just did recently. This is a lot of work too, man. Like, you know, like, it's it's all fun and games until you got to sit there and make a hundred of these things back to back. Yeah. Yeah, these are awesome. And uh, I think he's making them a little bit cheaper than he used to, too. And, uh, yeah, it's super cool. It's got the spring in there. Hand Good sculpted, badass. hand casted. They're also signed. Uh, the original run, I believe, was numbered by him as well. I have one of the original ball sacks over there. Yeah, if you want to grab it, he's got a number on him we can check out. 
That one was gifted. This is also to made me by Don back. as well, correct? Yes. So this sleazy and this, he also had a like a red devil and an alien, and those are both really cool too. These little head nodders, he calls them. And uh, I've always wanted a sleazy. Ended up getting gifted a ball sack. It's uh, what number one seventy two. Yeah. Is, uh, 1999 Hyper Real Slave. Nice. Slave pitting. Yeah. There you yep. go. And so that's signed, back when signed by Draculich. And so he signed it himself as well as sleazy. Yeah. So See, awesome. I, yeah, we got a sleazy here, and then we got a another yeah, sleazy. Yeah, I thought it was just sleazy on that he one. He usually signs both. Most of the posters I have from him, he does sign both. But yeah, ball sack's awesome. I've seen him quite a bit, but the sleazy one is just that's yeah. that's awesome. That's something it, you put on your just dashboard. Like, Do you know Gua? And he's just like, yeah, I know yeah, gua. I know Gua. Put that on the dashboard of your car. Yeah, exactly. I love that one. This is something I've had over here for a little while, and I can't remember who sent me this. Somebody just randomly sent me this as a freebie, and I've hung on to it. It's uh, Dave Brockie's uh, handwritten return address. It's got Michael Dirk's uh, home address on there when Dave was living with him. That's Super pretty awesome. Cool. I got a Dick Suck Jack sticker hiding up here, too. That's always great. I wish that uh, cassette would surface one day. I guess we could take a look at a couple of these different um, mojos, huh? Yeah, down here, these ones are just like, I got a silver one and a gold one. I got these second hand off somebody. And then uh, I got an odor of sale right here, too, from when they released those. This one is unopened. I think Eric Frankenberry drained this and gave it to me, so it's pristine. Yeah, you've These got a bunch of like the guar beers, the can beers, the bottled beers. Yeah, uh, I don't really drink beer, beer yeah. but uh, I've had a lot of... Uh, it's a collectible. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. I got the Kilsner here from way back and uh, stuff like that. These ones are my favorite. I got them paired up with Skullhead over here. These are the uh, back when they did the Mount Baker Vapors when Jameson was vaping a lot in the band and getting the sponsorships they did these and they were originally glass bottles but then they started doing them plastic and these are so cool because they're just like glass vials of jismoglob and with skull head on it like it's pretty awesome it, it, you can't go better than that so of course we got the dvd and the skull head right here with some jismoglob and i got a bunch of pics over here as well but yeah there's a lot of different cool stuff in here guys um we're not going to talk about each and every individual thing i'll pan over this entire shelf of collectibles and we'll take a look at stuff but let's go ahead and talk about another cool piece here pookie oh, just yeah. a quick mention because you guys have seen pookie cheaper. before maybe the old puppy Yep, you know, this was uh used on the ultimate guarnage campaign or uh yeah, one of those, the Guarnage campaign. I'm confusing it with the Ultimate Video Guarchive. Yeah, it's the Guarnage campaign, and uh, they use this one live. Chuck Varga comes out with it as this executioner and makes its head bark, and then Odorous proceeds to fuck its face. And it's awesome because, like, in the video, you see it has, like, kind of, like, this eyeball is really white. And when you look at it now, it's very yellowed. But, like, in the video, you can literally just watch him piss a fucking, like, 60 PSI stream of yellow piss onto it. He I'm actually does a little bit it. of piss, a little bit of cum, a little bit of piss, and <laughs> yeah. it swaps back and forth. But yeah, uh, so it's like, that's exactly why that's yellow. Super cool, though. I love these pieces, because like when you flip it around to the back, you see like little bits where they didn't quite get it all the way, and little bits of the yeah. cheesecloth and this stuff is so in cool. there. That's what I love Such about. an awesome build-up piece. You can tell the different pieces of cushion. Totally one of to a make kind. It. Yeah, and it's a one-of-a-kind piece. This is something that was absolutely used by Sex Executioner and Odorous. Definitely, yes, this is used. So back onto the used stuff, we got that other new piece that's kind of over oh, here out of yeah, the way. I almost forgot about that new piece. Yeah, this one I got from Sean recently. I want to oh, put that is awesome. a display together for this one. Um, you guys can't see I can't, it yet. It's in the case. Uh, it is the case that he toured with as well, from what I believe. We'll show the case in a minute, but if you want to pick up the guitar and hold it. Yeah, can. so... Oh, it is a guitar. Did give away. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty much in the same exact condition as I received it in. I, I pretty much haven't really taken it out of the case. I've looked at it a couple times. This is it. have not played it. Uh, and this was signed by Nathan, Nathan Krishna on the bottom. It's also got a little note on the back. That'll kind of go ahead and tell us what it is. If we'll go ahead and read that. It says, this guitar was used in the creation and touring cycle of Mensria, Media Coil Interrupt, playing by uh, Nathan and Smooty. So if you don't know who Mensria is, it was uh, Corey Smoot's band, like essentially before Guar. And uh, he was in that band with a guy named Nathan Krishna, who once he joined Guar and became uh, definitely the best flattest yeah. uh, of the band, 
uh, he brought Nathan along as Spewy, the Spew Slave, to kind of play some shows and be the guitar tech. It's fun fact, too, because Nathan Krishna is the only person to have ever played Odorous yeah, other true. than Dave Brock. Very true. Because he had a, a visa slip up, and he could, because he's a Canadian citizen, when they were doing a European tour, yeah. he couldn't get there in time, but all the costumes and the gear and everybody else was there. So Nathan had a, a pretty good idea. Od- so technically, this guitar is played by Odorous. That is true. That's played by <laughs> Odorous and but also yeah, it's by played Flattis. by Corey Smoot. Yeah. Yeah, and that Mensria album, Media Koi Interrupt, is a banger. Like, if you haven't listened to, like, in the Wretched video, you can see him playing this guitar. That's and so uh, that's, like, one of my favorite songs off of that whole album. It's got an awesome video, super heavy. It's, like, a little bit heavier. It's more, like, on the job for a cowboy kind of side of, yeah. like, it, like, you can, it's, like, down tune, uh, real heavy blast beats and stuff. So Check it, it out if it's you guys awesome. haven't heard Check it. Check it out, definitely. So yeah, this is uh, technically a Flattis and Odorous, uh, Odorous Spewy the Spew Slave, Nathan Krishna. Nathan's an awesome dude, too. He's still uh, out there hanging out in the community and stuff. So that's super cool that he uh, signed this and gave this piece of history to Sean, and he's been hanging on to it for a long time now, and uh, now I'm the owner of it. I feel like so I have cool. lots of uh, nice amps and guitars, so it kind of fits in, and... Uh, you, you can't deny that Corey Smoot wasn't just, like, one of the best people ever. Right. So, uh, this is awesome. I don't know if I'll ever play it. And, uh... It's one of those things It's, it's just like, one of those things that's like, I can't change these strings. Like, exactly. Exactly. You wouldn't want to break a string or fuck it up so Right, exactly. But, yeah, I do love it. It's got a full through neck, solid body. It's not a bolt-on, of course. It's got active EMG pickups in it. Really nice guitar. So uh, it's it's got some girth to it. This is this is a very soft. This is actually this same guitar is used in the Crossfade Cold music video. Oh man! He, so this is technically a Crossfade guitar <laughs> too. <laughs> that so is if you if you're not as much of a Guar fan, which I don't know why you'd be on this video, yeah. Uh, Crossfade. Yep. So there you go. Super some, awesome some piece. Truly legendary pieces here. And as far as it goes, I don't think there's too much else specifically in here that we're going to talk about. Yeah. Are there any of this wall art or posters you want to mention? If you, I can pan um, over here to I this. I can grab this piece right here. It comes right off. This is um, one of those MF Gallery pieces. Uh, this was a numbered run of prints that Dave did for the uh, MF Gallery series. There's a bunch of them. Yeah. He did like the Sargon, the like I think he did like the Flabulated Man and like the Odorous this Shoving the cool Coals ones. and I really want all of them. This is one of my favorites. But now. yeah, this has always been one of my favorites. So I actually contacted um MF Gallery like years and years ago and uh I asked if they had anything by Dave just laying around anything. And they were like, We might have some like unsigned ones or like unframed ones that we could sell you for cheap and I was super stoked about that. And then they came around and uh and popped up with this which is actually hand signed by him it looks like it says maybe like 290 what does that say like it's either a two or a seven i believe oh, that, it would be like that a two. number that's a number right oh there. Yeah. yeah that looks like 290 yeah so this is number 290 right here one of the later ones it was well after the thing this is one that they just didn't sell that stuck around the warehouse yeah. or whatever and so thankfully i emailed them and they got back with me and i got this for a really good deal so super cool little uh high res print it's always great too because like you, you can see details that you will never see online in a scan like this is this is intense. You can see every little brush stroke and mistake in it. Whenever I saw it in person for a moment, it because it looks almost textured in the frame, I thought that it was an original, and I was like, that's right. yeah. insane. <laughs> no, it's definitely a print, and when you take it out of the frame, the signature is bled through on it. So Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Uh, this is the frame that they sent it in, and uh, it's pretty much lived in this for like the past, uh, I don't know, like probably seven years or something like that that I've had it. So sick. But yeah, guys, other than that, uh, we'll pan around, show you guys some stuff in here. And uh, we're going to take a look at some of the costume stuff that you've actually made yourself. Yeah, definitely. And then some of the, uh, I think I got some original Dave pieces at the shop we're going to hit up too. That's that. true. True. We'll check out some awesome stuff. I hope you guys have been enjoying this video so far and let's keep trucking along.
All right, well, here we are in the garage. Um, we've got some pretty awesome stuff out here, most of which is not like official Guar merchandise. This is more so stuff that was fan made either by you or by other fans, like this awesome odorous mask. Yeah, this is kind of like our own slave pit here at the house. It's uh, the garage where we make a bunch of stuff, and uh, it's where I keep a bunch of like costumes and props and uh, unlisted uh, dead prostitutes and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, this was one that uh, Lonnie made over in the UK. Super fucking sick, killing it. Uh, I think he originally sculpted this as like a We Kill Everything version, but yeah. technically the same one that he used for uh, like 94 and on, like this Toilet Earth live touring, promotional stuff like that with the tentacle arm. Uh, and then he also is wearing a, the same, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily the same exact version, but the same kind of sculpt with the same nose on uh, the Carnival Chaos album cover with normal pauldrons. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, another thing is the, the horns don't stay with the brain. It's definitely that version. And he did use this up until We Kill Everything, uh, until about, like, I think Violence Has Arrived is when he made the, the War Party mask, as it is now, yeah. or whatever. It became used for both of those. And then he did the Beyond Hell look for a little while, and then went back to the War Party look before doing the Battle Maximus look, which apparently was, like, I guess that one was just the one to keep doing forever after that. Yep. But uh, definitely a cool version of Odorous. I love the way the ears come out to the side. Lonnie makes these really great, too. He uses a, a life cast of his head, brushes latex. Uh, all the pieces are then sculpted separately. So there's a, like there's a full face here, and the ears are sculpted separate. Uh, that's kind of how Guar would do it. That's how Dave did his Beyond Hell mask, and that's why a lot of the Odorous looks don't uh, replicate. I definitely want to uh, upgrade the costume at some point and do a tentacle arm version because this is technically the mask that he wears with that. So and, cool. And uh, obviously, as we just mentioned earlier, Flesh Column, hands down the coolest era, live. Really, really love this piece. Now let's take a look at one of the Guar masks that you've made. Or specifically, uh, yeah. let's take a look at this. This one. is the one that I've been wearing with my costume right here. It's kind of the one that I've, been, that I've been beating the shit out of. Uh, they're up here. It's in they're storage, just, probably. Uh, they're probably on one of these top shelves somewhere, kind of. He might be back here behind the wolf. I'm Maybe. not sure. But yeah, this is the Odorous that I made. This is based off of the America Must Be Destroyed version. Uh, it's not exactly accurate, but it kind of catches the vibe. It's got that same kind of snout to it. Uh, rumor had it that once this one was kind of destroyed, parts of the nose and the brow were kind of like repurposed for the War Party one. Hmm. So uh, I know that like at least the snout and the brows and the cheeks are kind of similar, but the whole bottom half and the ears of the mask and the top are totally different yeah. on that. The Violence Has a Life slash War Party on uh, mask that he used. Uh, so this one just kind of tries to, I love that like Phallus in Wonderland uh, skull head face kind of look. And uh, this is a really fucking tough, like, thick basketball yeah, copy right here. Yeah, it's something like they would have so, wanted on stage. Right, yeah. Now, the one that he wore was Locked really there. thin. Yeah. Exactly. And so I kind of want to mess around with making some thinner copies to wear as a costume. Uh, since I do have a mold. Last. But, yeah, this one is this one's very durable. You said and, I want uh, this to be around 35 years from yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> it's the one that I've been wearing for my costume. So it's got, like, face paint. And I always, like, uh, when I get costumed up, I bust a blood bag in my mouth and spit some blood out so that my teeth are red and my lips and all down the mask has got some fresh wet blood coming out the mouth like you just so, walked uh, on stage yeah so this one gets kind of abused a little bit he's got like some plaster dust cocaine on him too yeah a little bit of everything gets plaster out here when you're yeah. making monsters but definitely i got a whole array of cuttlefish up here these are this is the one that i'm currently wearing with the costume right here love the way it's painted it has uh i found there's actually an interview i could probably link you a clip of it to put over this uh, and you can only see the cuttlefish for like 0.3 seconds and it's got red eye stalks and yellow eyeballs and it's got kind of like a magenta -y purple kind of look with green Ooh. on the lips like this and I really liked that so I decided to make that version. Yeah, I was He's wondering if that was little... something custom you did or what but it looks great. Yeah, this it was kind of based off of that one look. He had the red and blue on the wings and the red and yellow eye stalks and green on the tip and, I, and a spike collar around the neck. And I was like, man, I got to do that. And I also really wanted to make a, a pair of blue balls. So these were made out of Walmart bags and uh, stuff like that built up. I put a little bit of puff paint on there. Some, 
uh, I call them whiskers, but apparently Stan Winston school calls them nernies. Yeah. And so like Maddie and Frost always call them nernies, and yeah. I think that's pretty funny too. I've heard nernies, herpes, whiskers, yeah. uh, tendrils. And then of course on this one on the belt, I've got this uh, campaign '92 all access Stumpy all access badge on there for that's the it. era that the costume's supposed to be set to. Uh, a little bit, honestly, more accurate to the version from Phallus is this one. Uh, I could probably one. remake, but yeah, this is, uh, this is an older, like, one-of-a-kind kind of one that I made. And uh, this one's supposed to be... You know, the main thing that makes this look like the Phallus one to me is how derpy the eyes are. Yeah. Like, they go out sideways. They don't go straight up like this one does. Yeah. I feel like in that, they're more like that. Yeah, they're like mushed they're, down. They're mounted out to the side like that. And he's got like the little beard and the blue and orange with the purple tip. Definitely, I love the Faust and Wonderland version of the Cuttlefish more than any other version. It was really cool. Yeah, had a lot definitely. of interesting color to it. Definitely. But yeah, once I saw that one in that interview, I knew I had to make one like that. This is actually, there's another one over here that was the first one that I would wear with the costume when I uh, first made it. Of course, before we did the shoulder pads and stuff. That's the one I remembered. Yeah, this is the orange one. Again, kind of the same as that phallus kind of color palette with the reds and oranges and the purple on the head and the white on the eyes. I, I wore this one for a while with the costume. And then uh, and then I made this one right here, which is the one I'm currently wearing. It's a little bit better. Yeah, I like the new one more. Yeah, but I like the really new cool. one more too. Yeah, this one's actually got this bat belt buckle on it, which is... Uh, survived to like most of the guar shows i've been to and uh apparently i think the same one that gerard way won it wore at one point is who i got it from told me that's why they had it huh and uh but it is cool because it's a bat to me and it's then this cool one belt. right here is the uh the jason lidman one of course one of my other favorite paint schemes for like this one came know. from you of course that's why you love the paint <laughs> scheme you can tell it came from me it's falling apart Not no i took the nuts off and put them on this one for a little while so they've just been kind of detached sitting up there but, but yeah, yeah these are the uh the brain nuts and the these this, are ones uh, i painted and inherited this yeah these, these came out crazy great. dreads jason did an awesome job on these i love how he sculpted the wing separate and then made like a little Place attachment po point form and stuff that's really next level stuff right there that's like the thing though with this one is it's just not only is it one of the later versions but it's just it's it's so clean it's just sculpted so good like the newer stuff i like the 90s stuff it's a little bit more like gnarly garage yeah this is more a little bit like clear cut and clean trying to make monsters type situation. right exactly which it looks great i love that one but yeah the early ones are just really really cool too definitely i love the uh that one that's in uh there's like a centerfold yeah. And it's just falling apart. It's like red mush, like blow-torched <laughs> cock or something. Like, it, it's, it's awesome. I love that one. And uh, I think the one that's kind of like this one from Phallus, you can kind of be seen uh, on the, that Kerrang poster that I have in the room where he's holding the dead kid. So next up, I guess let's take a look at the, the other pieces that are not the main torso part yeah. of the odorous costume. When we get to that, I will hold it up for you guys, but... Yeah, I got these. These are just the gauntlets that I've been using. I need to kind of, I want to make another pair of them. They're, they're not perfect, nice. but uh, they're about as imperfect as real guar ones would be, I guess. Because uh, a lot of the spike tips are kind of crooked and bent and stuff. But uh, I went with black and gold. I like that look. The old school kind of scum dogs. And uh, you'll see I did that with the chest plate to match as well. Originally, I had a, a green and orange chest plate on there. Kind of more like Carnival of Chaos. But uh, I redid it and just did a dry brush gold one, and I like it so much better. It matches with these gauntlets. It's definitely sturdy enough. It's something I could see them wearing. Yeah, I made it out of uh, the EVA foam, and then I put a cast on top of it. Uh, I believe on Dave's, these were just like bits of elastic or something. Yeah. Or Velcroed together overlap, but I just use it. It's a similar. It has the same look, right. but uh, it's EVA foam, and they fit me pretty good. I made another pair, and I cast the spike solid but they spin around on my hands too much. So I kind of like these ones a little bit better. And the gold look kind of matches what I got going on with the shoulder pads. Uh, here's the feet right here. They're all uh, covered in Odorous's various plaster cocaine endeavors. Uh, but yeah, super stoked with how those came out. They're on a rain boot, just yep. like the real ones would be. They're not stitched in like the original stage used ones. But Davis Bradley was real big about stitching stuff like that. Right. Uh, I made these shin pieces recently, so there's no real, like, official pictures of the full costume with these. They just have really bigger spikes on them. Yeah. 
and uh, I just feel like that's a little bit more accurate. They're still not perfect. I think his had like a lip around the top up here. You could always but, add uh, that too. Yeah, but it, they were better than the ones that I kind of like. That was one of the last things I made, so I kind of rushed it. And so I made another pair that are a little bit better because the other ones were just killing me. So these are close enough that uh, I'm we'll not... get the job not, done. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're on the ground. so People, people aren't looking at this as much anyway. Exactly. But yeah, I feel like these are way more accurate than the last ones that I had on there previously. Same now, thing with the fishnets as well. I got... For the main draw, I guess for this, I can hold it. If you want to pick it up, I'll come behind it and I'll hold it up while you talk about it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Grab this guy. Watch out, kitchen board. Yeah. So I have to uh, I have to reattach this spike on the back. It kind of came off, but these are uh, leather with spike strips that were supplied to me by Lonnie. He's awesome. Always shout out to him, ultimate homie. And uh, this right here was uh, custom made for me. Dave had a mojo with the chains that would hang out like this, because in a lot of photos he would clip it behind him like that. And I really like that look. Sometimes he just lets them hang. So I was really specific about having yeah, that. chains hang, you know? Yeah, another thing is you'll see when we go to the shop, I have a red one that's original. And uh, when I wear it with this costume, it hangs more like right here. So I had to specifically get a longer chain length. And as you can see, it, it hangs beard. damn near perfect right there too, below the Frenchie. This is that uh, that dry brush gold look I was talking about. I sculpted this original to... Uh, to look like the original one there is the original mold for this does still exist but i it's diy all day uh these shoulder pads we both sculpted yeah they kind of need some tlc done to them and stuff this was a but, test cast anyway yeah me and you made these they they survived pence they got made in time and survived pensacon so that was the main goal now i need to make a thicker set and as i mentioned i kind of want to make a tentacle set too uh, but yeah, we fiberglass. We ended up. What are we? We made a, a wet, silicone. like a wet clay yeah. sculpt of it. And it's molded in silicone. Yeah, we did RTV silicone, high temp silicone, and, and then shell. we did a plaster gauze shell. And then once you you know unassemble that and then clean it and reassemble it, then you can cast automotive grade fiberglass resin. And uh, you just you mix it, put a little bit of hardener in it, stir it up, pour it in there, put the fiberglass, lay it into the mold, and then you get nice solid rock hard and then you just zip time to football pads that's what dave did and they're awesome. uh, i did a little bit of leather work here with the hoop we tried super making stoked these, on how these came out these this is like a big accomplishment because there's been so many versions we've done we tried doing them out yeah. of, like forever ago uh paper mache. paper mache yeah paper mache fucking sucks everybody does we that. tried doing it out of eva foam and yep. it just won't hold up the spikes it won't support it and yeah. Uh, yeah, now we finally went ahead and did it the right way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I made these out of double corrugated cardboard glued together. And then I filled them with PVC and great stuff, expanding foam. And then we did paper mache over that and then fiberglass coated them as well. So I need to I need to fix these and make some new ones. But uh, I showed these to Don and he said they're really nice. They're probably one of the most uh, accurate. All right, guys, so the camera's overheating. We're going to go ahead and recharge it, let it cool off before we go to the shop and check that out. But we want to show you something that is not directly Guar related, but definitely Guar inspired. Totally. Yeah, this is some of the props that are used with uh, Terra Toma's live show. This is very Guar inspired stuff here. This Bud Monster is almost like our Gorgor. He's a big pet for us. We got him hung up right now. We're kind of working on him. For the uh, next show he's going to get used. And this right here, this is Maggot Man. This is something that I sculpted a while back. Very kind of like Brocky inspired. Definitely looks like straight out of his kind of sketchbook, I feel like. I originally made it for a mask, but it was kind of small. So it fit perfectly on this decap shoulders that we built here. So this is a sculpted piece. And then the head is a separate. It flaps off like that so he can be decapped. Obviously it's the eye holes are right here. Yep. So, uh... Just kind of like similar to what they would use on stage. Large chunk of foam. You wear it on your head. And uh, it puts a head above your head. So you can lop it off like that. It's definitely and, uh, a Brocky inspired piece. Totally. So yeah. Um, out here in our slave pit. There's a bunch of fun stuff like this. We got buttholes and cocks. And all the shit that you might actually see at the real slave pit. Yeah. It's just not real. It's okay. ours, which makes it cooler to me because it's not only something that represents that kind of style and keeps it alive, but it's it's our own like unique contribution to that. Like Dave's obviously not around making art, and this isn't necessarily a rip off of his character or something that he did. More so, just a it genuine new energy. creation that was inspired by 
the inspiration that he put out into the world. So can't wait to put some more puffy paint on this guy and then uh, bring him out live at the next show in February. Yeah. In Siberia. If you guys haven't heard be of Teratoma. And be queer and suck all the cocks and give us all the money. Or not me, but you know them because they'll kick my ass if I don't bring them money for yeah. drugs. If you guys haven't heard of Teratoma, go check out that fucking band right there on YouTube. All right, guys, we are here at the tattoo shop, and we're going to be taking a look at some of Gavin's other artifacts. He's got some really, really cool pieces up here, starting off with this familiar piece. That towel behind it, behind the mojo, that is, was used by Odorous, apparently before the show, and then, I guess, during the show, and then he just tossed it out into the crowd. It's got Doesn't a, it have, like, an imprint, kind of like a cuttlefish when you open it up? Yeah, it's kind of like the Shroud of Turin. There's, like, an imprint where he just pressed the entire thing, like, across his body, and it's a nice bloody print. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen it, there's a video on that piece specifically on my channel already. But this mojo here in the middle is pretty special. Why don't you tell us about that, Gavin? Uh, that one was... I got it from Davis Bradley, and uh, I told him I wanted a red mojo because he was making them for a little while when he was still at the pit. And uh, he was like, oh, I already got one. And so uh, he had that one sitting at the pit already and ended up uh, sending it to me. That was one of the first guar pieces that I got back in the day. So uh, super cool. Uh, not as durable as some of the other ones. It's the, there's like three different sculpts of that kind of. There's like a really old one that looks like hammered dog shit. And then there's that one. And then there's another one that like Matt sculpted, obviously, a little bit more recently. Yeah, really, really cool piece. And then I guess you've got some of your original artworks up here. Yeah, the one right there is from uh, Death Piggy, the Joe yeah. comic. That's, uh, uh, I think it says the date on it right there. Uh, 1983, Dave Brocky. Then you've got another Death Piggy piece down here. Yeah, that one's uh, Russ Bohorski drew that one and sent it to me with a couple of things. I got like this uh, R45 right here that's signed by him as well. And uh, the Love War right here. We got Death Rules the Fairway. And uh, then up here, we got some original Brocky stuff too. Very this cool. Is, uh, I don't remember who I got this one from exactly. I think, uh, I don't remember if it was Nick or Chris or somebody. Check that out. Super cool. I'm running out of stuff to gift you. Dave Brocky. Uh, I, bug me for yeah, some free ticks. Super cool. Said, y all, y all yeah, this is of course original yeah. on the top and he right said here. Yeah, these I mean, ones over here, like these are uh, puffy paint trip, 45s. So uh, this is original is Dave so artwork on some Death Piggy pieces. Yeah, he found a box of uh, these uh, Death Rules of the Fairway is what these are. And uh, he did uh, puffy paints on them. They're actually double-sided. I think I have some pictures of the other side. One has a self-portrait of Dave. Uh, but I, I picked these sides and uh, had it framed with a memorial card. Very cool pieces. And if we're moving up here, well, besides the human bone and Jeffrey Dahmer dirt there. Yeah. Uh, I think I got that one from uh, Devin Chomper, and uh, this came from a client of mine. I got some opossum uh, penis right here, and uh, this paintbrush right here. I want to say, uh, uh, what's his name, Matthew Graham gave me this. This is uh, from Dave's office. This was used by him at some point, uh, so super cool piece to have. I just kind of threw it in a little shadow box. Very, very cool. X-Cop stuff. Yeah, and definitely. Again, some Death Piggy. There's more uh, right There's, over here. Death Rules the Fairway uh, sign. Oh yeah, here's the... Uh, these are some super cool inserts from the studio sessions, 84, 85, that they released. Uh, there's a bunch of like, kind of Death Piggy history and stuff like that in here. Very cool artwork. Punk's not dead. Some Guar stuff too. Yeah, of course, you gotta mention Guar at this point. This was a re-release, a compilation, kind of, uh, of, obviously they released 345s in their time. They put them on Smile or Die. I have a shrink-wrapped copy right there, and uh, an original copy drawn on by Dave. Uh, they compiled those again onto vinyl after he passed, and that's what this is from right here. Really cool stuff. Uh, they did a gray version and a black version, I believe. Then up here, oh, yeah. you got the Dave prayer candle. 
And this, which I cannot wait for us to actually use this. Yeah, this is super fun right here. This is uh, Dave Brocky's sort of pseudo D and D campaign, Towers Two. It's released through this uh, Loft P, Lament uh, Lamentations of the Flame Princess. It's and cool uh, yeah, it's awesome. This is a acrylic piece done by him. There's some more on the back, and uh, it's a full on campaign. There's uh, here's the maps with uh, reference points to uh, where you'll refer to in the game. And this was actually he worked on this right before passing, and uh, they they released it anyway uh, right after he passed. So uh, yeah, there's all kinds of just like rad like characters in here and magical weapons and stuff like that. There's one in here. It's called the. Uh, there's death fuck magic. Like you can use <laughs> death fuck magic and. Uh, there's this like death phallus right here, super fucking cool. It like paralyzes people. Yeah, I'll show these pieces off too right here in the back as well. Very, very cool. Yeah, I really want to run this. I have some character sheets printed out for it already, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll get to that soon. And then over here, I think we've got the last of the stuff. We've got some more death piggy pieces. Yeah, those are uh, three original right there. That is, uh, R45 on the bottom was the last one I just got from Nick. That's my favorite one too. Uh, original Death Rules the Fairway with the artwork. So technically I have three copies of Death Rules the Fairway. Yeah, and this is uh, the original original. Yeah, that's the original artwork and this one are the original records but signed by, I mean painted by Dave. Really cool. Of course Love War. This is when they re-released it again with two songs that had thought to have been lost but aren't. So that one's super fucking cool. I've also got the Death Piggy t-shirt and stuff at the house. So yeah, overall, there's some really, really incredible Guar pieces, some really, really cool, I guess, some neighboring band pieces, Guar related stuff. Just really awesome. So thank you for sharing all these incredible pieces with us. What you drawing over there? You got anything you want to say to the people before we head out? Um, not really. Listen to Guar. Check out Teratoma if you like gay shit and yeah. violence. Yeah.